Climbing shoes are arguably the most important piece of equipment you can buy for your climbing. And it's gonna have a massive impact on how well you perform technique and skills in climbing. Today, we're breaking down the best climbing shoes and how you can choose the right one to fit your climbing. So climbing shoes is a big topic and actually we have done a video on climbing shoes before and I'll put a link to that in the description below, which has got Tom talking about the four big characteristics of choosing a climbing shoe. And these four were the fit of the climbing shoe, so how well it fits your foot, the opening system, so if it's Velcro, lace up, if it's a slip on, the shape of the climbing shoe, so how aggressive it might be in the downturn, and also the compound of the rubber, so if it's stiff, if it's soft, and how well it's gonna mold to the rock. In this video, I want to go a little bit more practical and show you how they work in different climbing contexts. So we're going to look at different contexts in terms of a good outdoor versus indoor shoe, where a soft or stiff shoe might be more appropriate, and where the closure system is going to affect things like toe hooking or heel hooking. After we've taken a bunch of shoes for a test drive, we're also going to go through and try and dispel some of the myths around climbing shoes, which probably impact your choice on what you buy, but actually might not be as important as you think. At this point in the video, I want to mention two things. One is that we are not sponsored by Amparallel and they are not paying us to show these shoes, but we are good friends with Dark Ventures, which is right next door to our office in Chesterfield. So they've kindly lent us a bunch of shoes to test drive. These are all their demo shoes, but we'll show a bunch of other shoe options, which are like for like in terms of these kind of unparalleled shoes. We are here today in the depot in Sheffield, and this is a pretty amazing indoor wall with an amazing comp wall at the beginning of the center as well. So let's start with talking about a good indoor shoe and something that's gonna transfer well to that competition style of climbing, which is more and more common in most climbing gyms. So here we have a flagship, and this is a great example of a good indoor climbing shoe. Doesn't mean it can't be used outdoors, but it's got some features which are gonna play into it being a really good indoor and pretty good comp shoe as well. Some other examples, like the flagship, will be the comp solution. It's got comp in the name, it's got a design which is useful for indoor climbing, and also the Drago as well. It's gonna have a lot of the similar features to this shoe. The first thing you'll notice is it's pretty downturned. It's got this big scoop in here, which means the toe is pointing down. And as well as it having a downturn shape, we can also look at it as being asymmetrical. So this means that it tends to bow onto the inside. Most climbing shoes will be asymmetrical. Your toe is gonna to be on the inside of your foot, but the more aggressive shoes get, the more you might find that they have this more asymmetric shape where they bow like a banana. Although it's pretty downturned, it's also gonna be quite soft. So there's two ways in which this shoe is gonna be soft. First is gonna be literally the rubber at the end of the toe. So it's good for smearing and molding to different footholds. The other thing that affects it is the midsole of the shoe. So you can see in this one, it's really flexible this way and this way. And that's gonna help it be more flexible when going through smears. However, if you wanted to have more tension on edges and things, the midsole of the shoe can continue throughout, helping apply more tension into that power point of the shoe right at the end. So two different examples, and that's gonna affect the stiffness of the shoe. Generally, and this is not always the case of course, you want a softer shoe for indoor climbing. And that's because most of the time the holds are quite big, particularly in the comp style, loads of big volumes where you wanna be able to drop the heel and smear. Even on the smaller footholds, you can normally use the wall to smear as well, where you can just actually be a little less accurate. But with outdoor climbing, we're gonna come across much smaller footholds in most cases, and you really want a lot of that pressure on just the smallest tiny area right at the front of the shoe. So stiffer for outdoor doors generally and softer for indoors. The most obvious exception to that rule is going climbing somewhere like in Fontainebleau when you're climbing on the sandstone and actually there's way more smears than there are small edges and so actually a soft shoe might excel in a climbing area here. The next thing that you'll see features heavily on indoor focused climbing shoes is a lot of toe rubber. This could also apply to shoes that are focused for bouldering where toe hooks and climbing on steep terrain is a lot more common, but definitely indoor shoes, you can see a lot more toe rubber. If I compare that to a shoe which is a bit more of an all-rounder, there's a little bit less toe rubber, and then particularly something like a lace-up, there's gonna be far less rubber again. So this makes them excellent for toe hooking, which is way more common in indoor or bouldering outdoors. Another feature that is really helpful for indoor climbing shoes is the opening system. So this has just got one strap and without the strap, it's basically a slip-on. 
but this makes it really easy to take on and off, which you probably want to be doing a lot if you're climbing indoors or if you're bouldering when you're resting between attempts. It's actually a really good tactic to make sure that you rest properly. If you find that you're getting out of breath and you're not getting good quality attempts, a good tip is just to take off your shoes between attempts because it's going to force you to rest longer. Another example of a shoe that you might see used indoors is this, which is a slip-on. It's the Unparalleled Mock. And this is gonna be a really comfortable fit. It's really easy on and off. It's not aggressively downturned and it's not too asymmetrical. So it's a nice comfy fit and you'll see people using this as a training shoe. Probably with this one, you're not gonna be doing as aggressive hill hooking or climbing as much in the steep terrain, but that's not to say you can't. There are still very good climbers which do use this on all sorts of terrain and make very good use of it. Personally, I'd say the biggest benefit of this is just comfort and convenience. So if you were looking for a training shoe, this would be a good option. If you are an outdoor climber or you do a lot of outdoor climbing and a lot of indoor climbing and training, you probably have a shoe which is a bit more versatile or what we might call an all-rounder shoe. This is a good example of the all-rounder shoe. It's the TM Pro. It's gonna be stiffer than something like the flagship. It's got a little bit more stiff through the midsole and the rand up here can help pull some tension into the shoe as well. It's still convenient on and off and will work well indoors too. But that little bit of stiffness is gonna help on smaller edges when you're climbing outside. Some other examples would be the La Sportiva uh, Ataki or the Instinct by Scarpa. Again, they're gonna be a little bit more stiffer. They are popular for an outdoor climbing shoe, but you'll see them used indoors as well. So a good all-rounder. At this point, it's probably worth bringing in a lace-up option as well, and just looking at the differences of what you're gonna get out of something that's like a slip-on or Velcro or a lace-up shoe. So for me anyways, the big benefit of going for a slip-on is more rubber over the toe, so better for toe hooking. However, if you're on a lace-up, you're gonna be able to get a more secure or personalized fit throughout the shoe, particularly around the top. And for me, I'm pretty bad at toe hooking, but I'd say heel hooks is a bit of my superpower. So I want to make sure I've got an excellent shoe for heel hooking, and that's why you'll typically see me climbing in lace-ups so I can get a real tight fit around the heel. Again, this is uh, probably a bit of a personal choice as well. Do a lot of climbing on the grit stone here in Sheffield, and there's loads of heel hooks, probably less toe hooks, or maybe I just don't look for them as often. So the lace-ups help me climb specifically on the type of rock I want to perform on. Here we have the Uprise VCS, which just means it's the Velcro Uprise. And this, as you can see, is much less aggressive than some of the other shoes, less downturned, less asymmetrical. And this is also a full-on Velcro shoe. So when we open it up, you'll see you get a much bigger opening and this can make it a really comfortable option and also very well-rounded. It's not pushing into any really aggressive category in terms of its shape or its stiffness. This type of shoe often gets lumped into the beginner to intermediate category. However, fitting a shoe into a certain category from beginner to expert is not a very helpful way of looking at it because there's lots of very good climbers which perform very well in shoes exactly like this. This is what brings us into probably the most important part of a shoe, which is just how well it fits your foot. A very well fitting beginner shoe is gonna be better for you and your climbing than a poorly fitting expert shoe. So making sure that the shoe fits your foot is probably the most important part of a climbing shoe. So make sure that works before you start thinking about is it better for indoors or outdoors? Is it enough downturn? Is the stiffness right? What's the open and closure like? So make sure it fits the foot and something like this might be one of the best fitting shoes for you. In addition to that, a shoe like the Uprise here is a pretty good middle ground of all of those things that we've looked at as well. So it makes a really good all-rounder shoe. So if you don't have a particular specialism, if you want it to be good indoors and outdoors, if you're not worried about having a downturn shoe, it's probably a good place to start with something like this. But also, if you're one of the climbers like me, and I know some of the other people here at Lattice, we have a bunch of different shoes. Having something like this in your arsenal of shoe is always helpful to have in addition to the more specialist shoes. In addition to the fit, you'll see that a lot of climbing shoe brands now offer the same shoe in a low volume version. So if you have a narrower foot, low volume might work well for you. So while it's worth experimenting with the 
higher or lower volume versions of a shoe to make sure that it fits well. It's also worth remembering that you're gonna have a softer or stiffer shoe as well. Some of them will use a softer rubber compound or some will just be a thinner layer of rubber if it's the low volume version, which means if you are a heavier climber, if you're taller and you weigh more, then you might want the stiffer compound or the stiffer shoe. And if you're a light climber, you want that softness so that you have the same sensitivity compared to someone that's heavier wearing the stiffer shoe. It's not always the case that it's softer depending on the brand, but it's something you should probably check out in the specification if you are looking for a softer shoe. On to some myth busting. And the first one is that downturn shoes are more advanced shoes. And at least this is what I was always told when I first started climbing, that the big aggressive shoes were for advanced climbers and I had to earn the right to wear them. I don't think this is true. And this is at least hopefully what we've tried to get across at the beginning of this video is that the downturn shoe is useful for certain things, but you can still look at someone like Steve McClure who climbed 9B in a very flat shoe, which looked way more like this. So. It doesn't mean that you need to be more advanced to climb in shoes like this, but there's just certain styles of climbing where this might be more useful. Myth number two is that you need to buy a training shoe. Now, I already mentioned this earlier in the video that a lot of people might wear something like this for training. There's some good climbers which have a shoe like this for their board climbing because they have to work on good pressure through the foot because it's not got that downturn which might help you get more pressure. However, there's also a good rationale to say that you should train in the same shoe that you want to perform in so that you're getting to know the tools of the trade and you don't suddenly jump to a different shoe for your outdoor climbing, whereas you do all of your practice and training in a different shoe for your indoor climbing. Obviously, there are still benefits to having a training shoe. For example, your outdoor performance shoe or maybe your indoor performance shoe might be quite aggressive, it might be quite tight fitting, and there's obviously upsides to having that. And you don't wanna be doing lots of training sessions, particularly anything that's lots of mileage on boulders or endurance in an uncomfortable, aggressive shoe. So you might want to buy a more comfortable shoe to do other types of training in. However, the point here is that you need to practice your training in the shoe that you want to perform in as well. Not everyone is gonna to wanna to buy two pairs of shoes as well, cause that's obviously gonna cost more. So a tactic I have used is to save your old shoes when they've still got a bit of rubber left, but you've needed to buy a new pair of shoes so that you've still got that good edge and a nice tight fit. And then use your old shoes, which are all baggy now, they're all worn in and they're quite comfortable for your training, anything that's gonna require doing lots of boulders or endurance training, that shoe's gonna come in pretty handy. This is an example of my pretty tattered Neutro Lace. It's seen better days, but this is my go-to shoe for pretty much everything. It's a good all-rounder, I love its heel hooking, but it needs to be replaced at this point. And I'm gonna hold on to this for a bit longer and I'm gonna use it for my training shoe, anything which I want it to be nice and comfortable because it's all baggy now and that can be good for my endurance training or big boulder mileage sessions. The next myth is that climbing shoes need to be uncomfortable. And this comes from the idea that you need a really tight fitting pair of shoes, which I do agree with to some extent. You don't want any dead space in the shoe. You want it to be snug so that you don't get any movement and you are still applying good pressure through the foot. However, with modern shoe design and technology, we don't need to have a really, really aggressively tight fitting shoe. If it fits your foot well, you can let a lot of the shoe design do the work for you. They have the rands applying tension in the right places and you don't need it to be really unbearably comfortable. Get the right fitting shoe and just make sure that it's comfortable for a training session. If you're crying by the end of your session, your shoe is too tight and you need to upsize. In fact, if your shoe is too tight, you might find that you start performing less well in the shoe. Upsizing a little bit might find that the shoe performs better for you, particularly if you find that you're losing all of the sensation in your toes because you have no blood going there anymore. Sensitivity is an important part of climbing so that you can feel what your foot is doing. The next myth is that lace-ups are no good for bouldering, which is not true, of course. This is still a very good bouldering shoe. It's got a great downturn, very technical, and it's got toe hooking rubber, which is a little less common on lace-up shoes. So this is a good example of a bouldering shoe and it comes with its own perks. Yes, there is gonna be less toe rubber. It's not gonna be a super specialist at toe hooking. However, the fact that you can get a better fit, particularly if you're struggling to find a shoe which really works for you, 
Laceups normally have that ability to get a really specialized fit for your foot. And my biggest perk is that laceups always help really tension in the heel when you get it nice and tight around the top of your foot. And of course, bouldering can be very heel hook intensive, so you might find that a lace-up suits you better for your bouldering. I hope everything that I've mentioned in this video is only taken as a guideline and not literal truth, because actually at the end of the day, the best shoe for you and your climbing is the one you enjoy climbing in most and fits your foot well. There's no perfect outdoor shoe, there's no perfect indoor bouldering shoe. It's always gonna vary on that individual and how well it fits them. You'll find people climbing in a shoe which looks a bit out of place, but actually they learn to climb really well with it. We see root setters getting up really hard stuff in their setting shoes or in their trainers, and they just have learned how to climb in trainers really well. The same can be said for a soft shoe outdoors or a stiff shoe indoors. People will make the most of the shoe that they like climbing in and that fits them well. Having the right shoe is all well and good, but in order to make the most of it, you need to have good footwork. So go and check out this video over here and we'll see you next time.